Hello, my fellow viewers and subscribers, and this is Super Chocolate Belichick, and, uh, well, when was it the last time we just kind of sat down, shot the breeze, and just talked? You know, I mean, me as a desperate YouTuber, and you guys as an entire viewer base. Now, I know this talk may be just completely and totally one-sided, because this is just a video right now, and, uh, <laughs> embarrassingly so, embarrassingly so, but, uh, I mean, personally, when has it been, like, uh... Man, it's been years now. Since I did this kind of vloggish style video, you know, where I've just sat down, spat out whatever was on my mind at the time, and then just kind of uh, went on with my life. And personally, this is probably just like a small video for February anyway, because, I mean, really, I wasn't planning on doing this. In fact, I'm probably going to be uploading it right away as soon as I get it into the video editor, and then out of the video editor as a video, so. <laughs> but I kind of wanted to give you a bit of an update on my life right now, and, uh, Tell you about how some things are going and whatnot. Uh, so, just so some of you guys know, I finally just started working on some of the stuff for uh, <laughs> the month of the shake, which happens to be next month. I'm running a little bit behind on it because I was hoping to start that schedule as soon as I posted up that video about an update for the month of the shake like a couple days ago. I forget when I posted it again, but uh, I did a video about that a short while ago. And uh, I am planning on doing a whole bunch of exciting content with that. However, when I posted my video for budget builds, nobody seemed to have taken interest with it. So I'm probably going to leave it be for now. For now. But in other words, uh, yeah, I still got a lot to do. I still got to finish up my animating the uh, new intro that I have for the channel. I still have to... Uh, Maybe just reanimate the little shake guy in the corner. You know, I think he's going to be in this corner. I hope he is. If not, he's probably going to be in this corner. But more than likely, he's probably in this corner. But I don't know. This camera really does... <laughs> this camera plays tricks on me, okay? <laughs> Let's just say, I think it mirrors the view. And really, granted, I don't mind the fact that it mirrors the view in any way, shape, or form. But it really confuses me when it comes down to editing the video and pointing out where <laughs> the little guy is going to be. <laughs> but other than that... Uh... Most of my life has been a little bit busy. I've been tied up with uh, doing the YouTube channel thing. Also still trying to work on uh, the game, too, that I'm working on. Because, again, I don't really have faith in YouTube anymore, and I don't think I can make money off of YouTube anymore. Because, And I don't think I probably ever will be able to make money off of YouTube. Let's just put that straight. Especially with the fact that YouTube is now introducing new policies that are super vague and really make no sense. So instead of adhering to all of YouTube's policies and bending a knee when I really shouldn't, I'm just going to completely and totally ignore that, and I'm not really going to take much in the way of sponsors or anything, and I'm just going to focus on something different, you know? I, I think I might just focus on doing video games, and you know what? I might do merch. I don't know how interested you guys would be in stuff like that, but I might do merch for my comic series and some of the game characters that I might come up with, but... I mean, granted, I'm not thinking designing these games with marketability in mind. In fact, I'm not even designing these comic book characters with marketability in mind because, really, I'm not much of a merch seller, and I'm not really in it for the money. I really want to just create something that I can feel proud of, that I can enjoy the creating, and I, and hopefully that some of you guys will enjoy you know, I don't know if some of you guys would necessarily agree with that. I don't know how you guys would feel about that. But, you know, this is just something for me, myself, and I. And, I mean, I'm not really going to let anybody else tell me which direction I want to go with it because, you know, it is my creation after all. And if people want to have some influence, that's fine. If people want to do fan works, I'm not going to shut them down on that. But if they're going to react like, oh, why isn't this canon? Why isn't this canon? Why isn't this canon? Then I'm just going to completely ignore them because... Honestly, at the end of the day, it's still what I did. I made it, and it is my little franchise. I do whatever I want with it, and they are my characters. They are my right. Because, personally, even if I don't mind other people using my characters, I just don't want people trying to canonize something that I wouldn't consider canon myself. Um, it's a little complicated to explain, but it's not like I'm against these people in any way, shape, or form. It's just the fact that I don't want to have anything outside introduced inside the universe. Unless I really, really do like it. But if I don't, well then, you know, I'm just gonna 
<laughs> leave it be and just let them have their own little way. And if they're going to complain and whine about it, well, then so be it. It's not my fault that they got offended because I didn't confirm that. In any way, shape, or form, they just act offended and entitled because they just want to be offended and entitled. When really, that just gets them nowhere in life and, honestly, ends up affecting them more in the long run. Which, of course, you know, I mean, if I had to transition, actually, Velma is probably a really good example of that. I, I, I hate Velma, so you know. Okay, the TV series Velma, because, oh my gosh, they ruined the characters from the Scooby-Doo franchise. I hate what they did with the show. I mean, I kind of hate Mindy Kaling for what she did to the writing of the show, too. Oh my gosh. I've been listening to other YouTubers talk about it, and they sound like they're going insane. Just trying to describe the plot. Trying to describe the very... <laughs> what makes Velma good. Or at least trying to make sense of what Velma's trying to do. I mean, there's nothing of a mystery. I mean, nobody's really a major suspect. It's more of a slice of life show. And that's not what Scooby-Doo was about. It originally was designed around some mysteries, even though, granted, they were bare-bones basic and really not too much to it. But you know what? It was a good show. It was a show that had a lot of influence on my life and really showed that, you know, despite what background, despite what culture, despite what you look like, I mean, you are still got your abilities. You still can use your abilities to your own benefit and to other people's benefits as well. Because you know what? That's the thing that a lot of people probably didn't realize. And, yeah, let's just say the one thing I will have to give Velma credit, though, the one thing I would have to say that's good about Velma is that at least it united the Internet on something. Something that I didn't think was possible. Mindy Kaling, how the frick did you do that? <laughs> just how? <laughs> that's kind of... Okay, that has to give some kind... That has to give out some kind of award, right? <laughs> because everybody hates it. <laughs> Scooby-Doo fans hate it. People who aren't Scooby-Doo fans hate it. The people that she was trying to panda to hate it. I mean, everybody universally hates this show. It's became the worst rated thing on, like, IMDb since Dragon Ball Evolution. And it's officially the worst rated show on net on uh, HBO Max. And it's even surpassed Santa Inc. in the terms of hated views. Or, well, people who watched it and hated it. How on earth is that possible? But, I mean, I gotta give credit where credit is due. I mean, at least she united the internet on something. Anyway, so, yeah. It's kind of like the Animaniacs where I think they dragged him to the mud. But that's another subject for another video. Anyway, probably back more on to my updates in my life. What else did I need to talk about? Well, I also kind of want to talk to you about uh, <laughs> a general aspect about my life. I actually have said in the video, well, I haven't physically said it, but I typed it out, saying that I'm searching for help, and I'm still searching. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a rocky process. I'm not going to share any information about that, because that's more personal than anything. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 okay. At one point in my life, I actually did get therapy, and this is a therapist who, if she's still working, if she's still seeing people, and she's still doing therapy, then, or counseling, or whatever she's still doing, I would actually highly recommend her, because she did a really great job. Her name is Jane Stearns, and personally, I remember her back when I was in, like, intermediate school, when we first started to see her. Actually, she was actually a pretty... I mean, at first I felt a little bit on... I felt a little bit at unease, but, you know, the more and more she visited, the more and more I talked to her, the more and more comfortable I started to feel around her. And I think that's kind of how it is with most therapy sessions anyway, because you got to get a little bit more comfortable with a person. But after a while, it's kind of like we started getting along, we started clicking. Sometimes she brings a little device in that usually beeps in my ear or vibrates in my feet. And then, of course, we play like a game of garbage. Which, of course, is a card game, by the way. Um, I'll have to make a video about how to play it. Because, actually, I still think I remember how to. I think I do. But I, I'm not quite sure. I'm probably going to have to look it up again. But either way, I think I still remember how to play it, yeah. But <laughs> it was a fun little game that we used to play. 
And then, of course, um, uh, I kept seeing her throughout uh, most of my middle school years and my high school years. Actually, I stopped after... I stopped shortly after uh, 11th grade. Well, not 11th grade, but 10th grade. Um, well, actually, part of the reason has to deal with my father. I mean, she used to do counseling for all of us, though. I mean, I don't know if she charged for Sarah, Krista, Mom, and Dad, but, you know, there was a time when she had, like, a group counsel going on between me, Dad, Mom, and my sisters. I mean, Sarah wasn't... I mean, I don't remember Sarah being at too many of them because she was at band, but that's another subject. But, of course, you know, one thing that usually tend to happen was me and my dad usually tended to get into arguments. So, I mean, I guess if you want to know what my relationship in between me and my dad is, it's kind of rocky. It's not exactly perfect. Most of the time, usually our conver most of the time of recent, our conversations have been me just sitting here remaining silent while he does all the talking. Because I know if I open up my mouth and say anything, he's going to have some kind of accuse accusement or like some sort of thing to say to me to tell me that I'm wrong or something like that. He has to be in the right all the freaking time. And, you know, I don't really appreciate that. I don't really like that. It doesn't really show humility on his part. And, you know, it, it hurts because, I mean, there's things that I want to say to him. I want to tell him the truth I want to say or the words that I want to come out of my mouth. But he shuts me up, he turns me off, and he turns me away. Actually, tell you the truth, we've also had, like, this big old argument about getting a new phone. Because they were going to be switching over from a 3G network to a 4G network. Though, granted, my new phone still flips onto 3G every once in a while. But still also does 4G, too. So, it's kind of weird. I don't think they fully switched off the 3G network yet. I bet you it was only because there was a lot of backlash from a lot of people. But, you know... It is what it is. I mean, I'm not going to complain too much about it. But the real truth is, is that my dad wanted me to buy his old iPhone, and I didn't want his old iPhone. Or I didn't want Mom's old iPhone either. Because, personally, I don't like Apple. Period. End of story. Apple has done a lot of horrendous things to the world today. I mean, look, I know some people are going to hate me for saying this. And you know what? You're viewing me on, my phone, on your phone, too. And I respect that. I understand that. Sometimes I have to watch a YouTube video every once in a while on my phone. Even though, granted, it may be kind of hard to do on a small screen. Sometimes I don't mind doing it. At all. Because, you know, sometimes I need a quick little fix. I need a quick little injection of what to do, when I need to do it, and how to do it. Actually, to tell you the truth, it's also kind of useful when I'm working on my car so that I can be downstairs. I go like, huh, what do I need to do with this? Search up a YouTube video on it and then go like, oh, okay, that's what I need to do. And move on with my life. I mean, that's kind of what, how, or well, at least that's how it should work. And I mean, that's kind of how it is. Sometimes I usually tend to listen in, try to figure out what I'm doing, you know, that sort of thing. And sometimes it helps out a lot just to search it up sometimes on my phone. But I digress. The reason why I don't really like Apple too much is because it put too much of the world at other people's fingertips. And, of course, you know, we put Twitter on their phones, it put, like, Facebook on their phones, you know, all that other stuff, news outlets on their phones. And it just delivered stuff so quickly to some of these people that they didn't have time to think about it. And because they didn't have time to think about it and form their own opinions about it, they kind of started developing the opinions of whatever people was reporting it. So, you know, they'd start developing the side of the Fox News, where basically they start being very, very conservative, or they start developing uh, liberal views, you know? And, I mean, if they go way too far over the edge on both sides, well then, I don't know. I kind of find it hard to... I, I mean, to be fair, I don't have anything against these people, because, I mean, they can be still decent people, but I really kind of hate the idea that their political views still kind of shape some of their more worldly views, and... Tell you the truth, I really wish sometimes politics wouldn't get brought up so much in modern day, in the modern day settings, you know? Because, I mean, sure, politics is a part of our lives and it does have a play in it. Yes, that is true. But I don't think it should be, like, the center focus, you know? It shouldn't be the thing that defines us as people. I mean, I kind of would love to open up my mouth politically and go like, yeah, I, I don't really necessarily agree with this, but at the same time, I can understand where they're fighting for, you know? What they're fighting for. But, uh, 
I can't really necessarily do that without getting labeled either an extreme conservative or an extreme... <laughs> or an extreme liberal, you know? And I mean, that's kind of where the problem with politics is today. I mean, you really can't open up your mouth and say anything without getting labeled for one side or the other. And it makes you worried. I mean, as an independent myself, I mean, really, I, my view on politics right now is that you don't, I already don't like your politics, so you're not gonna like mine, you know? <laughs> and that's how my view on politics is. <laughs> uh, but, you know, probably would be a better, the world would probably be a better place without 24-hour news and, you know, other stuff like that, and... Honestly, sometimes my dad gets a little bit sucked into it. I mean, actually, we have a radio out in the kitchen that he turns on every morning, and it turns on to a news channel that does news pretty much all the time. Doesn't do it all, all the time, because, I mean, they do play music every once in a while, but, like, from a small section of time, but then most of the time it's usually just news or... And they do have some other radio shows, but they don't really have as many as they used to. I mean, I think the only thing I really probably look forward to is the music hour, and or at least a handful of the music hours, and of course, uh, wait, wait, don't tell me, because <laughs> yes, I do actually do listen to that show. It's actually pretty hilarious, and the bluff the listener game is oh my gosh, it is so funny. But anyway, I guess another progression in my life is that I actually finally. Uh, I actually worked on my car yesterday and finally got one thing fixed. It's nice to drive it around without it having to sound like a helicopter inside the frickin' thing. Uh, <laughs> to describe what was happening, basically the bearing was out on the driver's side. Yeah, it was no fun, especially when the moment we pulled that plate off and most of it came out in pieces in our hands. Literally, in pieces. I mean, ball bearings were going out everywhere, and yes, they used ball bearings on a wheel bearing! Okay, can I tell you that this is stupid engineering? And this is how. First of all, um, there are two types of bearings, ball bearings and rod bearings, you know? The little pin or rod bearings basically kind of roll on a... kind of roll a little bit on a surface so that basically it... Well, basically the idea of a bearing is to allow slip on a surface, you know? It basically kind of takes away the friction, basically. And most of the time, these bearings are pretty much lubed up, but they also happen to have something in between the item that's moving and the item that isn't moving so that there is some slip, you know? And there are two different types of bearings to do this. There is the ball bearings, which, by the way, basically can maneuver in any which way that you need to. And there is the rod bearings, which basically only maneuver one type of way. Well, they put ball bearings inside there, and that is a huge mistake, especially for something that is like this thick with that size of ball bearing. <laughs> because, first of all, there isn't that much surface on the ball bearings, meaning that it wears out a lot quicker. But second of all, if you had it on the pin bearing, well, actually, no, there's more surface on the pin bearing compared to the ball bearing, so it doesn't wear out nearly as quick. I think that's probably one of the biggest mistakes right there, and that's probably part of the reason why it blew when it did, because that was part of the reason why we also took it apart, was because it blew, and it was causing a lot of problems, so we had to fix it. But of course, I also looked at a few other things on my car, and then found out that the shock, which, by the way, was a shock that we replaced a while ago, also was starting to fail! Ugh. <sighs> And then, of course, we also had... I also had the shock that was actually meant for the other side to be replaced at the same time. So we just brought that one down and replaced the shock on that one. However, replacing the shocks was a royal pain in the butt because my car has coil springs. And those things are freaking dangerous, might I tell you. <laughs> those things could quite literally kill you if you're not careful enough. Or at least take off your hand. So... The idea is that basically you have to use a spring tensioner to tension up the springs just a bit so that you can get your uh, strut through the springs and on t and then the plate on top and yada, yada, yada. You know, that on. So on and so forth. Well, tensioning up that spring was a royal pain in the butt and trying to make sure that it was on there right was even harder. 
because of the fact that it's a coil spring and it doesn't really necessarily have a fully defined endpoint like some coil springs do. You know, like for example, it kind of flattens out at one area, but it kind of, and kind of connects back to the other part of the spring. No, the arc, that coil spring just did not have that at all. It quite literally started out big at the bottom and then went up and then got smaller as it got up closer up to the top. And that's kind of how it's hard, so hard to align that thing onto the strut. <laughs> uh, the very first thing I wanted to do after getting that son of a gun on... I really wanted to say the B word, but I probably shouldn't because I know YouTube is going to hit me hard on that one anyway. The reason why I didn't do that was... The only reason why I did do that was because we didn't want to put another one back together. Unfortunately, they don't make it for the Horizon. So, hey, look, if you guys are interested in finding or helping me search up, like, pre-assembled struts that could work with the Horizon, that aren't designed for the Horizon, but can work with the Horizon, please hit me up, give me some suggestions, I would love to know. Because that would be useful for pre-assembling. Or at least for assembling. And oh look, FedEx is here. Anyway, yeah, we're expecting the delivery, so I better go answer the door. So, anyway, if you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe and comment down below. Hey, do you want more videos like this? Let me know. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so anyway, this is Super Chocolate Milkshake signing off, and I'll see you in the next video. Whoops.